another episode. First episode was, was quite well. That was about three weeks ago or so. Maybe uh, three and a half weeks ago. And uh, it was a great session. And we're in already. the net put together yet. Okay, we're definitely going to do a good car. And I was just sitting down to put the net together. I've only had the line in. Maybe six or seven minutes we just got here. Like literally just got here I was just setting up and I was just starting to put the net together and the rod screamed off and this is the result nice chunky little common beauty little carp great way to start the morning it's a fat one you can see the belly on that guy really thick it's a great little spot, a lot of great fish here. This is actually, we're about 50 feet down from down the shoreline from where I got my personal best of 31 pounds um, just about a month and a half ago. So this is a dynamite spot and I'll explain in a little while exactly why I chose this spot for this particular morning. Let's get this fish back and then we'll start to uh, talk about the setup. Okay, just a quick talk about the setup. Um, very simple, if you saw the last episode, um, very similar, almost actually it's, it is the identical rig. Um, this rig may change throughout the day, but I wanted to start off with this first, just because of the location. This is deeper area, okay, we're fishing anywhere from say 8 to 12 feet in the middle of this channel. Um, it's a slow moving river, there is current but not much. There's a lot of fish in here. And the reason we chose this particular location today is because of the cool weather we've had. Uh, three or four days, it, it's almost felt like it's October and it's only the middle of August. Um, we had a lot of rain yesterday, adding more, you know, temperature drop to the situation. So fishing that deeper water, I know that there's going to be a lot more active fish than if I were to go fish somewhere that's three or four feet. Uh, that water's going to cool right down, those fish are going to shut down. Clearly, the fish are a little bit more active here. Um, just since I let that fish go just a couple of minutes ago, you can see there's fish rising pretty steady right out in front of me. I've only put two handfuls of bait out, um, just two handfuls of, of prepared maize, tossed it out, put the rig out, and there it was. So identical rig as last time, inline pair lead, size 10 swivel, just wedged into the bottom so that I can get that bolt effect, anti-tangle sleeve, and a pre-tied hair rig. Okay, and on that, uh, I'm just tipping that with a little bit of corn to start the morning. I'm going to be switching to boilies later with a little bit of pop-ups uh, just to try something different. But that's the rig. I'm going to get some more bait on. I'm going to get back out there. I'm going to see if we can crank in another fish. I want that one. That one. Right, right there. That one in particular. That's my target. Be right back.
keeps just getting that set on the rod stand. Just move that down so you can see a little bit better. Those are just the beeps from the line sinking. I'm up on a hill, so I'm about five feet up off the water level, so the rod's quite a ways up. So the weight of that line is just slowly pulling as the everything drops and starts to sink in the water column. That just pulls it through the alarm. And there's more fish right there. It should not take long to get another bite. I'm hoping it doesn't take long. I haven't even opened my coffee yet. Ta-da! A little bit of cafe mocha to start the day. Now, another reason that I picked this particular location today, um, aside from the water and the temperatures and things like that, you know, very, very important factors, um, it's a public park. I got a picnic table where I'm set up. There's a nice parking facility. There's washrooms. There's everything. Uh, there's even a park for kids to play in, uh, like a playground. Now, the reason I chose this particular park for this morning with this water is because it's a Sunday morning. Sunday mornings in this park are super quiet until about 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. So I can come down, I can get a couple, whoop, I can get a couple of fish in right off the bat before it gets busy, before there's a lot of people moving around, disturbing things, other people fishing. Um, you know, I can enjoy the birds, I can enjoy the ducks, and uh, you know, ha have a, a nice, pleasant morning in the outdoors. And then once everybody shows up, I can move off to another spot that's quieter a little bit later in the day. I do have a place in mind for today, so we'll see if I make it over there. That was a good fish. Hopefully my head wasn't in the way for that one. Oh yeah, that's the other reason I chose this spot, particularly in this park. It's full of carp. There's so many in here. I've seen some monsters come out. As I said before, I got my personal best of 31 pounds just a short time ago, four weeks at the most. Um, just that way. Now I'm going to uh, sprinkle a little bit of bait just out in front just to help kind of direct the ducks away from my line and uh, hopefully it won't be long before I get another bite. Oh no! The bait runner didn't switch off and the drag was right down. That fish is there. Okay. This is where it gets interesting. I have a carp on the line. My reel has gone to a bird's nest, having new line on it. I'm going to hand the line that fish in. Now what a situation that has been. Oh. Just like the first episode, more issues with the reel and the line. You know, I, I think I put too much new line on there. Uh, tangled right up. So now I had to hand line that fish in. It only took me a few minutes. Luckily he was docile, but he is like double the size of the first fish. This fish is all belly. That's a fat one. Real beauty. put them under a lot of strain. I'm not going to weigh this fish right now. If I had to guess, I'd say he's mid doubles, you know, 15, 16 pounds. He's just a chunker, all belly in that fish. So I'm going to get him back. I'm going to get the reel settled. I'll get back out there while it's still hot. We got fish number three here. This, this spot has been dynamite this morning. Absolutely dynamite. Now this is a beauty. Got the fin straight up there. Could you ask for more of a picture perfect fish? Easy 10 or 11 pounds, nice size. And again, still the same tactic, just a few pieces of sweet corn on the hair. Uh, 
little bit of prepared maze out over the area. Not much. You saw, you can see in the background of, of the earlier shots that you know fish are rising right in front of me all over the place. And uh, really, I'm, I'm getting the line in there, and it's not even on the bottom. You know, at more than six minutes at the most before I get a take. And they're all the bolt rig is doing its job. They're feeling the weight of that lead, and they're taking off. still been pretty crazy this morning. Now, when I got my first line in the water, it was at 6.10 a.m. Uh, let's see. You can see that now. It is now 7.07. .07. I've brought... Oh. Something I was just about to tell you. that uh, I did lose my fourth fish, just a little guy I lost in the weeds. So just to try and slow things down, I stopped putting corn on and I switched to a boilie with a piece of pop-up corn just to try and fish it a bit different, maybe prolong the bites a little bit so I could actually talk to you. Uh, apparently not, every time I turn on the camera I get a strike. so far today it has gone straight out right to the other side of the river and then straight over this way to the left downstream and into the weed bed now they've all gotten themselves out except for the little one who got stuck in right in front of me I'm gonna go down and just try and get this guy out okay that one, I got him right up close, and he just ducked in under a tree that I couldn't get around, and he came off. He was a good fish, probably another mid-double, uh, but perfect opportunity for me to show you what I switched to, to try and, you know, slow it down, like, I haven't even got through my coffee. So, same lead system, inline pair lead, with the size 10 swivel wedged in with the anti-tangle sleeve. Then, on the hook link, I got a little split shot, about uh, an inch below the hook, with a boilie of my own design and a piece of pop-up corn. So when that's on the bottom, it's sitting this way, like this. So it's actually up, the bait's actually two inches up off the bottom. And literally, I, uh, serious, I turn the camera on and the fish bite. So it's, it's just insane. I haven't had a session this good in two or three weeks. I came down for two hours and crushed five fish. I've been here just over an hour. I've had five fish on, landed three. Let's go for another one. Okay, so a little bit of an update. Let's see. So it's now been 20 minutes since I lost that fish in the tree. I last spoke to you, I have had three fish on since then, all of which have been able to pull out uh, without getting caught in any of the debris, any of the weeds, the, the brush, anything like that. Uh, I couldn't figure out why I kept checking the rig, everything was fine. It turned out that there was just a slight burr on my hook point, so I wasn't getting the hook hold that I was uh, thinking I had. Um, two of the three were, were just small, less than seven eight pounds or they were just small uh, but one of them was a big one the last one uh, I would say that one was probably the biggest one of the morning so far he had a nice big roll right out in front of me and uh, yeah it was a beauty and that's you know, that's fishing you know you don't always get them in so that's now I've landed three and I've lost there's another one. Oh, what a beauty. You can just 
see that boilie with the pop-up corn just hanging out of the edge of his mouth there. Check that out. Uh, yeah, what a beauty. And uh, you know, the action hasn't slowed down. I've, I've been here an hour and a half. And this was what, my ninth hookup. And the fourth fish landed. What a morning. A few of these today. Some of them have gotten off. Just a little, you know, five or six pounds, not that big at all. But what a little scrapper. Beauty little fish. Glad to have got them, actually. You know, you don't always want to catch big fish. Every now and then you want to get the little ones just for a break. I'm sure we can get another big one. And again, this was on the boilie and the pop up corn. Uh, just to give it a bit of a recharge, I dipped it in a little bit of a corn extract uh, glug that I have. So, you know, so I don't have to put a new boilie on every time. So I'm going to get this little guy back. And then if the fish give me a break, which I doubt they will because I don't want to take my line out of the water, uh, maybe we'll actually talk about some of the other equipment like this unhooking mat and the net, things like that. The sun has definitely come up over the tree line. It's a lot brighter over here in my swim now. Um, it's it's still been crazy. It's starting to slow down a bit. I've, I've actually not been trickling as much bait in um, just to try and keep them kind of grubbing around and, and kind of fighting for what little bit they can get uh, instead of just spreading it out for drawing them all in. They're here. I don't need to draw them in anymore. And uh, I just got caught Facebooking. Uh, I was just updating the session and how we were doing on the Angler Files Facebook page and I had a take so strong that it actually pulled the bank sticks over I, like I, it's it's hard ground I'm not in that well and uh, the alarm went off the bobbin shot up wrapped around the side of the rod the bank sticks went over I got the fish on I fought it for two or three minutes just a rocket back and forth all around in front of me and uh, and the hook pulled so we are currently, my, my, num my number might, might be off, That's, that looks like it's just a big pile of weed drifting by. Um, my, my numbers might be slightly off, I forgot my, my notepad today, but I think we are at 11 hookups, because every bite has been a hookup, I've fought the fish in each bite. Uh, so we are at 11 hookups, 11 bites, and I think we're at 5 that have hit the mat. Five fish that we've got in the net put on the mat. Uh, oh, I won't know for sure until I look back over the footage, but uh, it's been pretty crazy. And let me see, what time are we at now? We are at, uh, you probably can't even see that, 7.51 is the time. So starting at 10 after 6 this morning, we are just shy of the two hour mark and we've had 11 fish on. That's crazy. I haven't had a session this good in a long time. Um, and they've all been carp, no catfish. This, this spot is, is notorious for good-sized catfish, um, in many cases so aggressive that they'll actually take uh, you know, bass lures and pike lures. So uh, I, I'm kind of surprised that we've actually gotten into this many carp. Uh, you know, the other spot that we did an episode one at, it, it, there's a ton of fish there, but I, I haven't hooked 11 carp over there in a, a whole day, let alone two hours. Well, they're still rising out in front of me here. So yeah, I just wanted to give you an update. Um, pay attention to that. No Facebooking while you're fishing. It interrupts what you're doing. So that's where we are. I'm going to stick it out here for a little bit longer. It hasn't, uh, it, you know, it's still so early, nobody's come into the park other than a few dog walkers and, uh, you know, people just out for their, their Sunday morning stroll. But uh, I, I did pre-bait an area uh, in a spot, 
it's a much smaller creek, like not even half as wide as where we are today, um, less than half as deep. Uh, and uh, there's a giant concrete bridge there. It's a, it's a dynamite spot for, cat, for catfish, for carp, uh, for all kinds of panfish and stuff like that. But it is very tricky to land carp there because they go right under the bridge and you know you, you risk losing them. But I've got a friend who's been doing dynamite down there. And uh, at about 4.30 this morning on my way here, I pre-baited that area. So, you know, being only five minutes from home on my way out of here, I plan to stop there for a little bit. So we're gonna try it out and, uh, you know, I'll bring it back next time I see the uh, next fish we get on the mat. Okay, so as promised, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the equipment. Um, I quite often forget that being in Canada, uh, carp fishing, you know, really hasn't taken off the way it has in so many places, you know, all over England and Europe. So a lot of the equipment that I'm using is very strange to some of the viewers, uh, especially North American viewers. You know, it carp slowly catching on as a tremendous sport fish to a you know a pretty small group of people. Uh, you know, overall, when you think about the amount of anglers in uh, North America, so one of the most important things um, that you know the Europeans have have definitely done that's light years ahead of what what we're doing over here is fish care and. Uh, everything that they use is centered around the health of the fish and uh, you know making sure that the fish are, are safe and protected um, so one of the the first things that i picked up when i started you know seriously going after carp uh, was an unhooking mat that's this thing right here a little bit of a bit there but it, you know it's just it's a padded mat uh, vinyl on the outside it looks like it's soft so that when you're bringing those fish out of the water, you're not setting them in the grass, in the dirt, on the gravel, things like that. Things that can damage the fish, take away that protective slime, uh, knock out scales, things like that. So an unhooking mat is absolutely essential, not just for carp fishing, for any fishing. Um, now that I have this, I will take this trout fishing with me. I'll take it pike fishing with me. Um, you know, any kind of fish that is, is larger in size where I'm gonna be putting it on the ground, whether it be to unhook it or to weigh it or things like that, all done with the unhooking mat. Fish care is absolutely paramount when we're out angling. And uh, to be honest with you, it's unfortunate, but I don't think uh, we as North Americans um, really pay enough attention to fish care. Uh, we really take for granted the amazing resource that we have here. So, um, you know, if you're gonna look into it, there's a lot of different types of carp mats out there or unhooking mats out there, way slings, things like that. Um, the Europeans have, have definitely done it right. Like I said, they're, they're light years ahead of us in fish care. Uh, so start with that, very, very important. Okay, the next, next piece of equipment that uh, I have found has... Oh, there's a bite. Yeah, it's still crazy. We're still getting pretty steady strikes. I've lost a couple more fish. Uh, unfortunately, I, I've lost track of how many hookups we've had now. Uh, I've even actually changed my rig uh, uh, slightly. I changed the hook link to a different type of uh, rig instead of just a straight hair rig. Uh, I'm actually running a combi rig, so I've got a stiff piece of monofilament between the sinker and then a split shot, and then a soft piece of braid going to the hook uh, and the hair. Uh, still fishing the pop-up with the boiling the pop-up and it's they're still taking it left right and center uh, but before I was interrupted uh, last time uh, by a crazy strike I want to talk about the net net is a very important piece of equipment uh, for any kind of fishing and I have almost as many nets as I have fishing rods for all the different things that I do uh, you know fishing wise whether it be trout salmon uh, carp catfish uh, bass you know everything I've got a different net for just about every situation I'm gonna find myself in and you know carp fishing and catfish uh, definitely no different there's a specific kind of net that really is best suited for that style of fishing and uh, that's this bad boy you've, you've seen me using it I can't get it all on frame right now because it's a 40 inch net and oh, there's another take Well, 
Well, just as I was starting to talk about the net, another take, because again, I can't put the camera on while the line's in the water. Got another beauty here. But as I was saying, it's a 40 inch net and it's the design, you know, obviously very soft mesh and makes it very safe for the fish. It's not picking apart any of the scales or anything like that. Nothing for their, it, the holes are so small that their fins are not gonna get stuck in it. Um, so again, you know, really showing how much effort is put into fish care. Just by using the right net, you know, it makes a world of difference. It's, there's some other unique features to that net, this net that we'll discuss in a moment, that really make it stand out among others. Right now, let's have a look at those fish. There's another beauty. A bar of gold, look at that in the sunshine. What a great fish. So we'll talk about the new rig in a few minutes and we'll discuss a little bit more about the style of net. But again, wonderful result, incredible morning. Uh, I don't even think it's nine o'clock yet. I, I haven't checked in a while. I was just shooting, uh, shooting the breeze with a, you know, a gentleman walking through the park, enjoying his morning. Saw all the equipment and was wondering what was going on. Funny enough, we're just discussing it. So. Let's get this fish back and we'll talk a bit more about that net. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the net. Uh, I've got it actually taken apart now, having just gotten that fish. So you've seen the handle, it's a long handle. The handle is uh, just shy of six feet long. That makes a big difference when you need to get it out there. Uh, you know, over a patch of weeds or over some rocks or even just into deep enough water that makes it safe to land a fish. Uh, you know, we got such a shallow bank in many of the places that, uh, that I fish in. The, the long handle has made a world of difference. I also have a piece, uh, say about uh, 14 inches long. Uh, turns out it's actually a, a piece of a pool noodle that I've wrapped in black tape just for flotation. So it keeps the back of the net up in the water while the front of it can drop down and you can scoop your fish. So this is the, the most important part of that net, the detachable uh, V, the detachable, detachable opening of the net. So normally it's like this on the handle, but to be able to get a fish in, you know, from the water to the unhooking mat, the long handle, it's not designed for lifting fish. Uh, you don't want to put that kind of a strain on the equipment to keep it lightweight. You, know, you don't want to have big steel pieces. So it's all fiberglass, and then these are just again fiberglass rods, but they come out of the handle. They come out of the little uh, little fork that's on the end, so that you can actually fold it up like this and lift the fish in the net safely, making sure its fins are against its side. And you're not, uh, you know, harming the fins or anything like that. You can carry it safely over. Now, if we were getting into bigger fish, you know, 30s, 40s, uh, or bigger, if we were, you know, somewhere else say over in the UK, they actually have uh, way slings and things like that that make it much safer to transport the fish. You don't want to carry something that size in just a net, put them in a big um, heavy duty, you know, material sling that's actually going to uh, really make sure that those fish have no risk of, of falling or dropping. So uh, again, a uh, piece of equipment that you know we would almost never see over here that is really, really essential to fish care. And, you know, this net, as opposed to some of the other nets that I use, has also helped me increase my landing percentage. So you can see in the last two videos, I've lost a lot of fish. Uh, surprising even myself with the amount of fish that I have come off or I've lost. None of them have been lost at the net. Uh, once I get them to the net, they're in. Uh, everything that I've lost has actually been coming off quite a ways out or close in before I've had the net on my, in my hand. But once that net's in the water, it's increased my landing percentage drastically. It's so easy to get them in. It's got a soft front, right? So there's no bar to get in the way uh, like this, nothing rigid. Uh, you just kind of scoop them up gently and then you can hold them in place. Uh, it lets you leave the, the net in the water while you get everything else sorted so the fish stays in the water. You don't have them out for an extended period of time. So again, a piece of equipment that is absolutely essential to fishing and fish care that you know, maybe you haven't seen before. So, uh, so give it a look online uh, to check with your local tackle shop. You know, my local shop, Peter's uh, uh, Tackle, has actually got a, a wide variety of carp fishing equipment. 
that really if they didn't have it I would have no exposure to other than buying it online. So definitely uh, you know, look into that kind of net and add that to your fishing. Okay, let's just take a minute and talk about the actual rod and reel. Um, I know it's probably not the easiest thing to see uh, given the camera angle, but I've got it as far back as I can go with, uh, with still being able to hear the microphone. Um, this, this setup just for the rod is probably different from what uh, North American anglers normally see, unless you're really part of that elite group that really do fish for carp hardcore. Um, I've actually got a, a rod that's designed specifically for carp. It's a nine foot rod and it's a two and a half pound test curve. So in North American terms or Canadian terms, what we'd normally call probably a, a medium action or medium heavy action rod. Uh, it's designed specifically, a big fish, specifically for steering fish around in your swim, uh, controlling them better. Most people, you know, certainly when you watch the UK videos are using 13, 12 foot rods. Uh, because of my fishing being in so many small creeks, ponds, things like that, I don't need that length because I'm not casting uh, a tremendous distance so I can do all my steering and control with a 9 foot rod. I do plan on getting a 12 foot for some of the other spots we fish in and to get that better steering capability. But for right now, you know, the 9 foot rod is doing great. Now the other piece that's essential to this is the reel itself. Uh, the rod and the reel are a combination that I, I picked up. Uh, they're made by a company called Carp Kinetics. Uh, it's, it's a UK company. I ordered this online, and the reel is a bait. Oh. <laughs> Prime example, you know, turn the camera on and uh, got a fish on. The reel itself is what's called a bait runner reel, and as you can see, the fish could actually take line without me holding it, and it's not from the drag control. It was, it's almost like a free spool option for that fish to be able to take line on the strike and you don't have to worry about your rod going flying in the water, which has happened numerous times. Uh, some of our field team members actually, you know, have lost rods in the past from, you know, incredible carp strikes that they weren't expecting. And, you know, this eliminates that completely so that a, there's no fish striking a rod around in the water. Again, fish care being paramount. The combination of these two together, the, the heavy rod for steering, the reel designed for controlling, the amount of line that goes out, it, you know, really makes a world of difference. So I'm going to get this fish in. Then we'll talk a bit about the bite alarm and the strike indication system uh, because I'm going to run out of battery soon. I'm not even going to make it to my other spot today. So let's get this fish in. Okay. Starting to do a little bit better now the fish are coming in. Not getting away now that things have slowed down. It's not been as hectic. And that just could be because I've slowed myself down. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed I have a tendency to get pretty hyper and overexcited when I get fish on, especially when I'm getting them back to back. So slowing down has probably increased my percentage of getting the fish in rather than losing them. So as we were talking about the rod and the reel, there's that strike. That's the fish that took it. Another beauty, you know, six or seven pounds, not that big. But, you know, in that sunlight, just a shimmering bar of gold. You know, what a wonderful looking fish. It's been a tremendous morning. You know, we're really, really doing well here. Stay on that unhooking mat. Make sure it doesn't get in the dirt. So I'm gonna get this fish back in, and then we can discuss the strike indication system. Well, what a wonderful situation that was. I just let that fish go, and I put the line back out. I was gonna show you the strike indication system here, and like seriously, the, the line hit the bottom. I didn't even tighten it up yet, and there was already a fish on. He, he must have just witnessed it coming down and got right on it, and we got him in. So, it's, you can tell it's still, Pretty, pretty crazy, you know, it's just a little guy. But I really, I can't get a chance to talk about much else other than, oh my goodness, I just got a fish. Or I just lost a fish. But I got a fish, here it is. Another little bar of gold. Beautiful little guy, you know, three or four pounds, not that big at all. 
what a scrap, what an aggressive, like super aggressive take. So I'm gonna get this fish back in and uh, looks like we're down to the last, uh, last little bit of power in the battery. So hopefully we can talk about that strike indication system. Okay, so since we're down to the last uh, like two or three minutes of battery power, uh, we'll talk about the strike system right now super quick. Um, so the bait runner reel, obviously we have it set so that the line can go as soon as that fish takes a, a strike. The other important components are the bite alarm, which you've heard go off many times and you've seen uh, you know, the bobbin moving as well. The bite alarm and the bobbin work in tandem. Obviously, the bite alarm is gonna go off if the line passes through. So a fish takes it, it's gonna run, it's gonna set that alarm off. The other important part is the bobbin. Uh, that's more for drop back bites. So yes, if a fish takes it, you're gonna see it jump up and you know away it goes, again, forward motion. What you don't usually see is when the fish picks up your bait and comes towards you, moving the sinker towards you, dropping that line down slack. The bobbin is that weight on that slack line that pulls the line through the alarm backwards. So getting a drop back strike, you're still gonna get those blips, uh, the noise, and quite often keeps that little bit of extra tension on the line so that when the fish does turn around and take it again, it's ready. So uh, again, super important system. Shows you the earliest of indications, you know, so much better just watching your rod tip or, uh, or just kind of even feeling it in some cases. Uh, I've noticed more subtle takes with the line movement that, you know, my battered old hands can't necessarily feel that well. So again, really looking at fish care, early indications so that they don't get that too far back in their mouth get them in quickly so you know that's that's some of the equipment that you may not have normally seen that again you know the UK and, uh, and European anglers light years ahead of us over here let's change that let's keep up let's use that equipment let's put that focus on fish care and uh, you know since we're not going to make it to my other spot today we'll try that another time you know have a good time on the water we'll see you next time Thank you.